Thank you for gathering around this morning. Now I have a, a very, very special privilege today. I want um, my friend, Pastor Gerald, to open up his video so that we can see him. Thank you. Dear friends, this is a uh, thank you, Pastor G, for being here. I know him as Pastor G, and, and I want to thank him for joining us today. This week, since um, since Memorial Day last Monday, with the death of George Floyd, and then seeing that thing, that awful event happening on Monday, and its juxtaposition with Pentecost, with thinking about the outpouring of God's Spirit and God's breath of life on every human being, that juxtaposition has stirred in my heart all week. And this week I felt a strong prompting that on this day, we as a community of faith need to do more than declaring. We in a, as a community need to do listening. And I felt in particular that we need to listen to someone who doesn't look like most of us. My friend Gerald, as you can see, is a beautiful black man. And if my calculation is right, he's about the same age, roughly, as George Floyd. And dear friends, when I felt the spirit prompt me to ask Gerald, I happened to be in a meeting just late Friday afternoon. <laughs> and this dear man said, said, Doug, I will, I will help you and share with you. Because I think we need to listen for a moment in these pastoral reflections to a voice of a person whose life experience is not exactly the same, nobody's experience is exactly the same, but whose experience is closer to the experience of George Floyd and Ahmaud Arbery and the list of many, many other people who have suffered injustice because of embedded racism in our culture. And I don't know what the Lord has laid on Pastor G's heart for us today, but I do know Pastor G's heart, and I know his sensibility about wishing to follow the guidance of the Spirit. And so I've asked him to share today's pastoral reflection on this holy day of Pentecost so that we can be a people who listen and can be a part of what God's Spirit wishes to do in the honoring of all life among us. Pastor Gerald, thank you for being here. I just want to say Pastor Gerald is the campus pastor at Roberts Weston College. He's a dear friend, he's a colleague, and, and I am delighted that, gee, you are willing to be here with us today. Let us listen to God's word through our brother, Pastor Gerald, today. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Um, such an honor to be with you all. Um, I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And I bring greetings on behalf of my family, uh, my wonderful wife, Jessica, and our uh, six beautiful children. We had the opportunity to worship with you all uh, during the Christmas season, and uh, we enjoyed our time there. And so it is an honor to be with you all uh, in this format as well. So thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity to serve in this way. Um, and I must be honest, I really was praying and searching, Lord, what can I say? What would be uh, the right thing to share? And um, it was a, it's a wrestle. And to be honest, I am still in that wrestling um, at this moment. But as I read through the scriptures and I thought about everything that is happening in our time uh, with COVID-19, uh, the racism, uh, the protests, uh, 
some riots, all of those things, and just conflicting. And this theme kept coming back to me, which was about breath, which Dr. Cullum, which you spoke on uh, eloquently in the children's sermon message. And I want to reflect in the pastoral reflection today on when God breathes. When God breathes. I've been thinking about times in my life where I have um, experienced a shortness of breath due to fear. And in conjunction with um, what happened with our brother, uh, George Floyd, and the picture I'm sure many of you have seen of the police officer's knee on his neck, squeezing the life out of him, and him pleading for his life saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. As I listened to that, and I saw that my heart uh, was pained, and I too experienced shortness of breath. And I'm thinking as with much anticipation to celebrating this uh, feast of Pentecost, Lord, we need you to breathe. God, we need your breath. Uh, because as the psalmist says in our reading for today, in Psalm 104, 29, it says, that when he takes away their breath, they die and return to dust. But then it says, when he let looses his breath, when he, you let loose your breath, O oh Lord, they are created and you make the surface of the ground brand new again. That is from the common English uh, translation, but this idea of spirit and breath and wind, but when God breathes again, there is something that happens within humanity. And I'm so grateful that on Pentecost uh, Sunday that God breathed again. As I think about um, my childhood growing up, as growing up in the inner city of Chicago and all of a sudden in middle school, being moved to an all black, being moved from an all black neighborhood to an all white suburb where we were the only black family in that community. I remember my younger brother and I, he's two years younger, of us having a, a couple of run-ins in the community and really struggling um, and trying to make sense and saying to my mom, mom, we, we wanna go back home. We're not appreciated here. Cars are driving by and they're yelling the N word at us. We wanna go home. And I remember my mom saying to us and pulling us together close and saying, boys, you are different from your father and I. We grew up in the deep South and uh, we only grew up around black folks, but God has something different for you all. Your life purpose will transcend only black people, but you will leave a mark on people from all over. And so this is God's training ground, his preparation for you. Uh, we didn't take too kindly to her words, but if I'm honest, in that moment, God was breathing through her to breathe life into us again. Some 30 years later, as my wife and I are raising our children, we find ourselves here in Western New York again, um, and raising our kids in the school system and it's a bit angering and frustrating because I'm experiencing shortness of breath again as my kids wrestle with their identity in another predominantly white community. And as they deal with their struggles and they wrestle, it is uh, sad and it is a tragedy because my son, who was, in, who was in middle school, well, he was just approaching middle school. He's on the bus coming home. And there is a, a girl who stands up the same age and she says to him, hey, Amari, I know what you are. And he looks at her as if, what are, what are you talking about? And she says, you are a N-word. 
And that is the first time that my son has ever dealt with anything like that. And he came home and he experienced shortness of breath as he sobbed into the lap of his mom, weeping and crying, gasping for breath in between, broken and hurt because um, he was now dealing with racism in a way that he uh, did not expect. It just came out of the blue. But not only him, but the rest of my children too all dealt with issues and it would not be enough time to share all of those with you. Um, but I, I am marked by Pentecost because when God breathes, he does something. God breathes not only in us, but he breathes upon us and he breathes through us. When I look at the passage in John where Jesus comes to his disciples who are locked in because they're fearing for their lives. They don't know what's happening. They're dealing with uncertainty. And he shows up greeting them with peace. And with this peace, he says, he breathes on them again. He says, peace be with you. And he breathes on them. And he says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. In Acts, we see that on the day of Pentecost, they're gathered together on one accord. And what a unique event, a unique time, because you have Jews and those who are converting to the Jewish faith there from different, ethnic, dif different ethnicities. Uh, they speak all kinds of different languages. And God wants to mark this moment to do something mm. unique. And he does so by breathing. And it is the sound of a, of a rushing wind. And we see that God gives, all, gives his, his disciples, those who are in that upper room, he gives them the ability to speak in other languages. And what I love about this is this is what happened when God breathes in and when we receive his breath. You see, they, they were able to cross this barrier of language. And when they were speaking in other languages, the people who were gathered there were able to understand what they were saying. And this is what I believe, is that when God breathes on his people, that his people receive his breath and inwardly there is a capacity to understand, a capacity to speak and understand the language of others. My desire for us as a, a Christian community is that we would be a people marked by the Spirit of God, that we would allow the Spirit of God to work in us to where we understand other cultures, to where we understand people who are different from us. You know, I look at God's church and I look at how some are silent about what is happening in our time. And there are some who are vocal, but it's not near to the level of where it should be. And I ask myself the same question that God asked the prophet, can these dry bones live? God, can your people really be a reflection of who you've called them to be? God, can we really live out our call? And I have hope that the breath of God can shift our paradigms. It can shift our worldviews where we will be open to the work of the Spirit of God within us, willing to carry us beyond our own limited experience and viewpoints. But not only does God breathe within us, He breathes upon us. And this to me is carrying us on mission because we're called not to all be huddled up in one place, but we're called to go beyond the barriers or the walls that we know. And Jesus says to his disciples, he says, as the spirit sends me, so I'm sending you. You know, I must admit that living in a suburb full of white people, when I say that generously and respectfully, uh, it's hard 
And I, my wife and I, we struggle to be here with our children because we know the differences and we know the pain that they face. But this, if you will, is where the breath of God blew us. And we're asking ourselves, God, how can we be a witness here? And I believe that God wants to blow his people. He wants to blow up on them to propel them from for mission to bring the breath of God to others because once God breathes in us and he does this continually, changing us and transforming us, he blows up on us, sending us to those places where we may not want to go or where there may be potential offense. But he also wants to breathe through us so that we can bring life and hope and the breath of God to others. Friends, there is so much I would want to share with you, but I am somewhat limited by time. Uh, but as you think upon these things that I've shared with you in this season of, of Pentecost, allow the breath of God, receive the breath of God, allow it to him to have his way in your life, allow the spirit of God to propel you, to give you an understanding, but also allow him to breathe through you that he may shift your paradigms so that we can be a unified people of God. God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us now spend some time in reflection.